we're going to be hopefully saving this and putting it on YouTube. My goal was to talk about ingredientology in general and MCT, but obviously take questions from anyone who uh, wants to jump in. And so thanks for joining us. Sean Wells has been on our channel many a times. He is um, the chief science officer of NNB Nutrition, amongst many, many other things. I have your site up because we got to list off all the letters. MPH, LBN, RD, CISSN, FISSN, expert in the fields of nutrition, uh, nutrition longevity, fitness. You're, you're what you call a biohacktivist, which we can qu quickly talk about. Registered dietitian. You've been chief clinical officer. You've done it all. And, uh, and yeah, we've loved what you've done. I was really quickly, before you came on, giving the, uh, the, the update on the Sean Wells rebrand. You used to be at Zone Halo, which may have been like your old discussion forum name way back in the day. And now yeah. uh, you are the ingredientologist, which I, I think is an awesome name. I'm like, oh, I, and on Twitter, you're in, at ingredient, ingredientology. And uh, yeah. I love that. Ingredientologist is open. I'm glad you got that. So, so uh, congrats on the rebrand. Do you want to talk about that real quickly before we get into it? Because I did want to talk about ingredientology in general and then take any questions. Because obviously, uh, immune might be on a lot of people's minds, and I'm sure you have a good take on things too. So, so let's, yeah. let's have at it. Yeah, 100%. So, um, ingredientology is a term I came up with for NNB, of which, like you said, I'm the chief science officer for. And ingredientology is the part of the company where we work with uh, other people, other brands, to develop new and novel ingredients, be it a whole new ingredient, be it a new delivery system, a new extraction, a new bioactive compound percentage. Just in some way, we're developing a new ingredient. And our team, you know, just like you know, like I've patented ingredients, I've worked on studies around these ingredients, so our team will help people develop these ingredients and we can co-develop on the intellectual property and they can benefit uh, financially from it as well. So that's a side of the business and I thought, well, dang, if I'm doing ingredientology, why don't I just be the ingredientologist, you know? So I'm the, the scientist of, of uh, ingredients. I'm the expert in ingredients and that's what I truly want to leverage. Obviously, you know, like I'm well known in keto and biohacking and paleo and supplements and a lot of things and that's cool but I wanted to like focus my brand on my true expertise and what people know me for and and come to me for and that's ingredients so it's not only going to be ingredients like supplements it's going to be things like discussions on gluten how does it affect you discussions on uh, allulose and sucralose and you know uh, different ingredients like that so because I'm working on food products and beverage products as well yeah, there's actually a, a simple idea that I, I have to throw to you and the NMB guys. I've seen, like, when we first started talking, you're like, hey, you know, feel free to suggest things. If there's a common problem that keeps coming over and over and over in the industry, I, I, we obviously talked to a lot of our brands, and there's, there's like some silly stuff that people complain about all the time, and it's like maybe Sean and NMB can get together and make it. So I, I think no idea is too silly, and there's been one I've been meaning to send you, and it keeps coming back, but obviously we've had some uh, – other big things happening so uh, my silly little idea might not be like important in the world but for for some of us who want a little bit of flavor it, it could be so uh, no idea is too small so let's say I have this this wacky idea let, let me just make something up right out of the blue uh, we've seen some cool studies with like uh, let's just say citrulline and watermelon extracts seem to like amplify each other or whatever let's say I have like some idea where I think I'm going to get this special watermelon extract and blob it with a citrulline molecule and some sort of lipid, and I got an idea, and I've read a few studies where I think, like, this, this really cool combination could be, could be micro-encapsulated for a better pump or something like that. And I am just a guy who's reading PDFs and research. Maybe I have a degree, maybe not, um, but I don't, have a, I don't have a ton of money. I don't, like, maybe I have a small brand, and, uh, but I don't have, like, the ability to, like, extract this stuff or to, to synthesize it or anything. I have this ingredient idea at the end of the day, and I don't have the resources to like go to the next step. What do I do? Obviously, I talked to Sean Wells and NMB Nutrition. So what, what's the process kind yeah. of work like? Yeah, exactly that. Um, I mean, it, it starts with the idea like that, and, and we'll take a look at uh, the costs of it to make it the feasibility, the stability, mm -hmm. not just costs. Like, that's one aspect. And, and we can look at different methods of making it, like whether it's synthesis, extraction, fermentation, and then we'll look at the stability of the ingredient. Uh, what's the uh, standardization and the testing look like around the bioactives? Um, and, you know, what equipment's needed to make it? And, you know, the, the whole, the, whole uh, the, the global aspects of this whole project. So 
And then, of course, like what would it take in terms of uh, intellectual property? Um, grass and toxicology generally recognized as safe, so it can be put in food and beverage and the toxicology work. Um, what is the existing intellectual property around it? Like, you know, is there a pocket that we can develop something and patent it uh, around composition, around uh, use or utility, uh, around synthesis? Is there some unique uh, part of this that we can have as our intellectual property and profit from? So, like, we're going to look at, like, all those aspects and work as a team on it together and and decide whether it makes sense to go forward. But we've we've already done this several times uh, with several brands and, uh, and come up with some pretty cool things. So with several brands, like, is there a possibility of getting it co-patented? Like, would my name be able to be on the patent or anything? And uh, yes. And then, the, is it like, whose idea would it be to say, if I'm a brand, I want it to be exclusive to me versus, hey, let's just sell it to everyone. And, and like, would I get it cut? Like, are there different options that are available in that in that aspect? Yeah, with the patent, um, as far as being a patent holder, you have to be involved directly on the intellectual property. Uh, otherwise, it can nullify the patent. So there's some nuance to that. Like, you don't want it to be just because, like, you contributed money um, okay. or, you know, you say, like, hey, can you guys look at this? That would be probably not being listed on the patent. But if you're involved in the in the intellectual development of the ingredient um, as a team, then you could be listed on the patent. So it's potentially you could be listed on the patent, but there's also the financial rights to that patent, which is separate. Okay. So you could definitely benefit from, from it financially regardless. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, and we're not lawyers, so it's good to lawyer up in those situations. Kind of, kind of curious, of course. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then you can decide how it how it gets sold or distributed or or anything like that. Yeah, okay, cool. exactly. We, and for those watching on YouTube, I, in the top of the description, I will put up a um, a link because we do have a blog post kind of talking about some of the process and everything. But I I think it's really fascinating because uh, you know we've seen some comments on, on our on our uh, Instagram feeds and just on social media where like a lot of people think there's been a stagnation of um, of development. What's the word of innovation? The keyword innovation. And and you're definitely one of the people who you know, there's a few. I got like five names. There's like you're one of the five I say is really pushing things. And and so I think like we have to look to you and a few others for that type of innovation. But what's cool is like I don't know. I've never seen so. It's always been so tightly guarded and so tight knit and people ripping off other people and everything. And and I think that's how like ideas get just held to the chest and then nothing happens because it's tough to like do this. So it's a. Uh, it's kind of nice to see what, what you're doing here. And I really hope people like kind of take you up on the offer because there's a lot of, there are a lot of good ideas out there. We're seeing so much research and there's like, you know, we're, we're catching new ingredients that we can't even like go down the rabbit hole on all of them because there's not enough time. So it's like, it's helpful to, to be with someone who has a, a team there. And, the, and that's the point right there is the team like, and, and I can totally understand the keeping these things tight to the chest. I've had some ingredients that are like 10, 15 years old that I've, you know, been holding, like you said, tight to the chest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once I got this team with NNB, that's been the game changer. Like, working directly with China on the raw material supply, they have all the equipment, they have over 100 scientists. I had ingredients in my hands that I dreamed up that have never been on the market before in my hands two weeks after me that's mentioning crazy. the ingredient. Nice. And... And then we have a whole team that develops the intellectual property, Dr. Martin Perpura, uh, Dr. Ralph Yeager, Dr. Chad Kirksick. Like these are some of the biggest names in, in sports nutrition, supplementation. Uh, they're fellows like in, in several organizations. And, and then we have the attorneys uh, in the space as well to work on the patent work. And we have the, the academic and CRO teams to do the studies. We have the uh, team in China or um, in India to do the uh, grass and toxicology work on the rodent models. So I mean, we're we're a global team, mm -hmm. and we have everything in place to make this stuff just happen. Like so, this that's a huge difference in terms of you know you holding some ingredient that'll just never see the light of day. And mm -hmm. another thing I can tell you is like the cost of these ingredients. I had taken them. 
some of my other projects to other partners other than Kylan in the past. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would be 10 times the price because they didn't have the team in place to, like, a lot of what Kylan does isn't just uh, the feasibility, can we make it, and it literally is working on the process and spending months on that process to reduce that process, the the steps and time and and what's involved in that to greatly reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. And then, therefore, it's a usable ingredient. That's great. And so you bring up China, and obviously there was a comment, China, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Obviously, China's been in the news uh, a lot lately. So I've, I've obviously been incredibly impressed with everything NMB has done. They've shown third-party lab tests. I asked for it. They're, they're putting together um, LD50 tests and stuff and the things that I don't see other manufacturers doing. But how do we, how do we separate and distinguish the trust of, of these different companies? Because obviously a lot of people are kind of like, you know, there's, there's an anti, um, you know, there's, there's more of a, a pro-America thing that's starting to surge, obviously, right now. So, so how do we distinguish who to trust and who to be more guarded with? Well, first off, NNB, like I just said, is a global company. We're working mm -hmm. with, I mean, we have NNB USA, which involves me. Uh, we have uh, a team in, in Germany and in India and in China, like in Brazil. Uh, my teammates, the scientists I was just referring to, are here in the United States. And Kylan's invested heavily in the United States uh, in these studies working with these American brands. We're working, obviously, with you, Mike, you know, Price Plow, like, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I understand, like, that perspective, but just, like, that, I mean, to me, that's, like, that gets into, like, a lot of politics, you know, yeah. like, you know, maybe if you're talking about Huawei or some brand that's working on a kind of government level, uh, I can see the controversy, but, I mean, yes, they're in China and we're here in America, but, you know, we just both like to work out, and we like novel ingredients, and they're good people just like we're good people. Like, I mean, Kylan, I would, I would go to battle for any day of the week. Like, he's one of the best people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah, so, I, I think I mean, that they, they like, seem like they really want to make a, a change in the other opinion, and they've, they've convinced me, like, these guys are doing it right for sure. I, I, I've yeah. been impressed, and, and if nothing else, there, um, I'm excited. Hopefully, uh, we can get like some third-party lab tests continuing to roll. Maybe uh, a, a NutriBio gets a, gets a couple of their supplements. You know, they're going to third-party test that stuff. So that's why I always like to get NutriBio involved in everything. And uh, I, and I'm hoping we'll see a little bit of that because everything I've seen so far has been great. But I don't actually have the lab equipment here, so um, so I do always appreciate the third-party tests. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. And and this is no different than any other industry. We're seeing it with a. There's, you know, scandals of generic drugs and stuff coming out of India. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, we need to actually just keep publishing lab tests. And, and to me, uh, that's where I've seen NMB. Like, I asked them for something, and then you see a fresh Agilent report, like, right right off the bat. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, so far, so far, so good. And so it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm really curious to see, like, what you guys all come out with. Now, you are known for being on at least the Teacrine patent which, yeah. you know, we could argue if it's a stimulant or not, but at the end of the day, it sounds like you might have a little bit more. Are you going to, are, are there any plans for any new stimulatory compounds since uh, Price Foundation does like its stims? <laughs> There's definitely plans for, uh, for that and for a number of other things, like, uh, including, like, nootropics, uh, like, we have the exercise mimetic, BABA. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's there is so many things coming. I can't even tell you. Like, there's probably like we have 20 compounds that are in process right now. Wow. Okay. That will be on the level of things like like Beba, uh, like just truly exciting novel compounds. Awesome. So cool. We'll uh we'll stay in touch on all that and everything. And and we actually have a uh, a pricepot.com slash nnb dash nutrition page where you can sign up for the news alerts and everything. It's a kind of like a brand page. It's not really a supplement brand, but that's how we've we've got it set up so that people can follow along uh, every month. We're we're trying to cover at least one new ingredient, and uh, and I think we know what we're going to blog about this month, so everyone can sign up. And there's just a lot of uh, really unique stuff. We learn we learn a ton every time we do this, and and so that's kind of where I wanted to shift gears. I I, I want to open up if anyone has any. Cool. Yeah, exciting news. Yeah, <laughs> see, I told you, I saw Nature would be excited about the new ingredients. Francisco, right there.